So Zenger's on trial for criticizing Governor Cosby in the pages of his newspaper, the New York Weekly Journal. This is a crime, seditious libel. It's a crime. It was a crime under British law at the time to criticize the governor. Um, this was considered one step away from violent overthrow of the government. So it's looking bad. Fortunately, Zenger has one thing on his side. He has the best and most famous lawyer in the 13 colonies has stepped up to defend him. A man named Hamilton. No, not that Hamilton, not the guy from the musical. That guy hadn't been born yet. Zenger's lawyer was a guy named Andrew Hamilton. Who Now, this is a picture of uh, Andrew Hamilton as a younger man. He was, um, by the time Zenger's trial came along, Andrew Hamilton was, was very old. But still um, a sharp mind. And this is, these are some excerpts from Hamilton's closing argument in the case, his defense of Zenger. And you will notice that in Hamilton's um, arguments that he's, invoking Enlightenment philosophy and the English Bill of Rights. Enlightenment, you know, remember John Locke, author of the English Bill of Rights, posited that our rights are, they come from nature, um, that we have natural rights to life, liberty, and property. Hamilton writes and says, it is natural, it is a privilege. I will go farther, it is a right which all free men claim that they are entitled to complain when they are hurt. Right? He begins with a reference to natural rights and, and ends this sentence uh, alluding to the English Bill of Rights and the right to petition grounded in English heritage and tradition and law. Hamilton continues. They, people, have a right publicly to remonstrate against the abuses of power in the strongest terms to put their neighbors upon their guard against the craft or open violence of men in authority, and to assert with courage the sense they have of the blessings of liberty, the value they put upon it, and their resolution at all hazards to preserve it, liberty, as one of the greatest blessings heaven can bestow. So, he's suggesting the value of freedom of the press, freedom of expression, is we can alert our neighbors when the men in authority are crafty, clever, and evil, and are threatening us with violence. And you know we should be allowed to assert with courage the blessings of liberty. That phrase, blessings of liberty, will later on show up in the Declaration of Independence, not by, mis not by accident, right? Hamilton here is channeling Locke, and Jefferson, when writing the Declaration of Independence, will be cribbing from Locke and Hamilton, this Hamilton. Hamilton continues, The loss of liberty to a generous mind is worse than death. And yet we know there have been those in all ages who, for the sake of preferment or some imaginary honor, have freely lent a helping hand to oppress, nay, to destroy their country. Hamilton is suggesting that Governor Cosby is such a bad guy that he is oppressing the country, destroying the country. This guy is going to be the ruin of New York and Britain if he is unchecked. This is what every man who values freedom ought to consider. The man who loves his country prefers its liberty to all other considerations, well knowing that without liberty... Life is misery. Now here Hamilton is invoking his old age. You see that I labor under the weight of many years and am bowed down with great infirmities of body. Yet old and weak as I am, I should think it my duty, if required, to go to the utmost part of the land where my services could be of any use in assisting to quench the flame of prosecutions upon informations set on foot by the government to deprive a people of the right of remonstrating and complaining to of the arbitrary attempts of men in power. 
Hamilton is saying there should be no prosecutions upon information. It shouldn't be a crime to share information. But to conclude, the question before the court and you, gentlemen of the jury, is not of small or private concern. It is not the cause of one poor printer, nor of New York alone, which you are now trying. No. It may, in its consequence, affect every free man that lives under a British government on the main of America. It is the best cause. It is the cause of liberty. No. Maine of America, meaning the North American continent. He's saying this case is not just about Zenger as an individual. It's not just about the colony of New York. It's about the right of people across all 13 colonies to freedom of expression, to speak and write their ideas, to criticize bad government when there are bad men in power. Now he flatters the jury. And I make no doubt, but your upright conduct this day will not only entitle you to the love and esteem of your fellow citizens, but every man who prefers freedom to a life of slavery will bless and honor you as men who have baffled the attempt of tyranny, and by an impartial and uncorrupt verdict have laid a noble foundation for securing to ourselves, our posterity, and our neighbors, that to which nature and the laws of our country have given us a right to liberty of both exposing and opposing arbitrary power, in these parts of the world at least, by speaking and writing truth. So, a lot of stuff in that action-packed last paragraph. He's saying, look, you want to stick it to the man? Um, you want to take a shot at Governor Cosby and his misrule, his corruption, his tyranny, then do it through your verdict. Find Zenger not guilty. In closing, he's invoking again enlightenment philosophy, the concept of natural rights. He's also relating these freedoms to the laws of our country, the English political heritage going back to the Magna Carta, up through the recent English Bill of Rights. He's asserting a freedom to expose arbitrary power, that is to, um, to share information about um, illegal things that the government might be doing and opposing, pushing back against arbitrary power. And the way to do that is by speaking and writing truth. This is a ringing argument for freedom of speech and freedom of the press. This is Hamilton's Hail Mary. Andrew Hamilton standing up for this printer, John Peter Zenger. Andrew Hamilton is asking the jury to do something remarkable. He's asking them to ignore the evidence, which clearly shows his client is guilty, and instead find him not guilty and, in essence, redefine libel, redefine the crime itself. He's saying it shouldn't be a crime to criticize the government if you're telling the truth. He thinks libel should just be the crime of lying in print about somebody, including the government. And indeed, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the modern definition of libel. Libel is when you uh, write down something that is false that and, and publish it, right? You, you write it down and spread it around, um, this false thing that you have written uh, to damage someone's reputation. That remains a crime. Um, and, you know, this is this is how we got here. This case is how libel went from you know, a crime of criticizing the government, even if you're telling the truth, to um, it's a crime to lie about somebody um, on paper. Um, now, the judge tells the jury, ignore this old man Hamilton, um, just rule on the evidence. Did Zenger publish these newspapers criticizing Governor Cosby? If so, you got to find him guilty. He'll be locked up a long time. Well, the jury doesn't listen to the judge. The jury listens to Andrew Hamilton, and they 
acquit Zenger. They vote that he is not guilty. There is a uh, there's a term for this when a jury ignores evidence and finds the accused not guilty because they disagree with the charges. They disagree with the crime. They disagree with the laws. That term is jury nullification. Right? Nullification is a fancy word that means canceling. So what's happening here is the jury essentially is canceling a law that they don't like by delivering a not guilty verdict. We will see other instances of jury nullification in this course soon, so jury nullification is important vocabulary. Jury nullification, in this instance, uh, leads to a shift in practice in the 13 colonies because now that Zenger has been let off, he goes back to printing whatever he wants in his newspaper. And newspapers throughout the 13 colonies start printing whatever they want because they believe that if they get arrested and it goes to court, um, they're going to get off just like Zenger did. So ladies and gentlemen, the Zenger trial effectively creates press freedom, freedom of the press, in the 13 colonies. And indeed, colonial newspapers thrive. Um, I mean, they, they were doing fine before, but um, they're doing even better now because they're off the leash. They, um, you know, because Zenger, um, with help from his dynamic lawyer, Andrew Hamilton, have enlarged the scope for freedom of expression, uh, newspapers capitalize. And um, thriving freedom of the press is going to be a major driver a few decades later of the American Revolution. That's all for today. Thanks, everybody. Bye.